What's up, you filthy animals? You're tuning in to the Turn Me Loose Podcast, where we like to talk a little shit and make you feel weird. Follow us on Twitter, Turn Me Loose Pod. <laughs> What's up, nerds? Ben here to tell you about TMLP's newest favorite product. You ever been stumped on what to get that tough-to-buy-for person in your life? Well, look no further, because I got the gift for you. Straight off Etsy, JD and K Industries create the best presidential scented candles around. That's right. You ever wondered what it'd be like to have Barack Obama smell up your living room? Or leader of the Bull Moose Party Theodore Roosevelt holding down the aromas of your bathroom? Imagine a sensual evening with the love of your life in the bedroom and the stench of Donald Trump fills the air. Whatever generation you prefer, your house is going to smell like the Oval Office. Visit Amazon or Etsy, JD&K Industries, to get your sweet stink presidential candle today. You won't be disappointed. Hey everybody, welcome to the Turn Me Loose Podcast. My name is Patrick. We're going to have a great show for you tonight. I'm Ben. Welcome. Sup, Mike here. Our doggy Dizzle, a.k.a. Ryan. Let's jump right into it, guys. we got a lot to discuss on the headlines. Currently, it is April 25th. You guys know the significance of April 25th? April 25th. Three days after Pat's birthday? No, it's the perfect date. It's halfway to Halloween. I'll tell you that. How is it the perfect date? Is, is this a miscongeniality reference? This is a miscongeniality reference. Oh, it's not God. too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. You know? Oh. No miscongeniality <clears throat> up in this piece. Don't question my miscongeniality re- knowledge. One of my favorite guilty pleasure movies, but... Duh. Yeah. And... <laughs> my God. Uh... You know, it's April 25th. Who's, Might as well start the show talking about Sandy B, you, baby. You William Shatter and Sandra Bullock. That super, like, Tommy Boy girl, and then she's got to go be a pageant star. She yep. was a cop. And it's just, like, awful comedy. Oh, it's amazing. It's such a good movie. It's yeah. so subpar. Just, we are all winners, though. I like 13 going I on 30 it. more than Miss <laughs> Congeniality. 13 going on 30. Jennifer Gardner's way hotter. Mike, you'll appreciate this. Up for debate. Do you know why April 25th was the perfect date? Why Uh, it was chosen for the movie? No, I don't. According to William Shatner, it was because it was the director's wife's birthday. Oh, man. That's a a trivia fact right there. There you go. Director, you're killing it. Thank you for that. So use that at your next party, everyone. And reference hashtag TMLP. That is but an awful party reference. 13 though. going on 30, really? Meh. This is in that fucking it's backup same, like, I'd rather watch 27 kind of Dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Which we did Catherine watch at the White House one just, time. She just it's wants just to be a time. bride. She's sick of being a bridesmaid 27 times. <laughs> Who would do something to such a nice woman? 500 Days of Summer. That's a good. That's a good movie. <laughs> that day. So we're just starting off with a rom com. Can we just? Uh, Five hundred days of story has an, has or five hundred days of summer has a nice story behind it. Definitely, maybe. I uh, it has nothing to do with the actual movie though. I don't know. like definitely. I got, uh, you don't like definitely maybe. No. Come on, man. Ryan Reynolds. No. What about uh, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days? With uh, mm. it was before the McConaughey. So. Heath. Heath. Oh. <laughs> Pat, tell him. Pat, you got one? No, Pat's got a nice story behind 500 Days of Summer, though. Oh, shit. Did you group? get topped off in the movie theater or something? No. I... For this? <laughs> oh, I think I know. Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> the Pat story for this one is I got waterboarded on a cruise with that. So, like, pretty much to make, to make that sound simpler, uh, I was quarantined in my room on a cruise 
And there's only four channels on a cruise ship. If you've been on a cruise ship, there's four four channels. One of those is a kids channel, and they just play movies constantly. And it's the same movie over and over again for that day. They have 500 Days of Summer, Indiana Jones and the Crystal School, and uh, well, so what, worse than Indiana Jones. Just engraved <laughs> in his mind. Not even Temple of Doom. And then like some like some rom com probably. I don't know, I don't know the other one. Five but Days of Summer was the rom com. Or like an even worse one than that. But I watched 500 Days of Summer I think like 14 times that day. That's not even possible. He did. It wasn't. It's uh, got to be at least. An it wasn't hour and 14 half movie. times. But. It felt like Why were you quarantined no in your room? There we go. Well, there's, it was, the, there's the better question. It was from like, it was from like 7 a.m. till like, I don't know, till the evening. So and it was only that, and I was 12 hours of that movie. Pat, you was just, it 12 hours? 24 hours. What'd you do? Did you try? Day. Will you just tell the people already? You eat? You ate poop? Yeah, I ate poop on a cruise ship. Uh, <laughs> so not only have you shit and caught it, but you've ingested shit as well. Go on, Pat. Now you good. have a chance. It wasn't just like, oh, hey, there's a turd. I'm going to munch, munch, munch. No, this <laughs> Seems is... Like it. What happened was it was a, <laughs> a, a case of a foodborne illness. Like, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the the nor- norovirus. 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 N-O-R-A. Uh, so basically what happens is someone uh, is sick and doesn't wash their hands properly after they've taken a dump. So their feces so gets So their feces food. gets in their fingernails, and when they're preparing the food... All that ready to eat stuff, and they're not wearing gloves, Oosh. or if they prepare like the buffet, or people just getting in the buffet. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's also extremely contagious. So maybe someone else got it, and then like they got me sick. So there's different ways to get it so you rather just than just eating shit. But what happened was there we go I'm with the story. I'm hanging out with my buddies, baby Pat. Hanging out with my buddies on the ship, and we go to the buffet. I sneak onto the buffet after it's closed. I munch, munch, munch on the food. And I don't know. I was the only one that gets sick though. So, hmm. but other cases were happening on the on the ship. But out of my friend group, I was the only one to get sick. That was so there. maybe it was before but you even hit the buffet. This was also the first day I tried alcohol too. Hmm. So I got kind of drunk, and I was this. What happened was I was found puking in the hall, trying to knock on like different doors, trying to find my door. And this was like I also like sleepwalk and sleep talk so what i think happened was i woke up in the middle of the night started sleepwalking in my underwear trying to find my parents room because i'm not feeling good and like i just puked everywhere hmm. so they cor- <laughs> they quarantined me et style in my room like they wouldn't let you out and they wouldn't <laughs> let me out for a whole day and i think i was just drunk like it was just like me being hmm. like me being drunk for the first time because Knowing me now, I can't handle alcohol very well, like, the day after. So what's your favorite scene in 500 Days of Summer? Oh, my God. I like the uh, Hall and Oates scene when he's singing in, in the park. <laughs> and, like, he, put, he, put, he, puts, <laughs> he puts his hands up and the fountain goes. And it's just, I do like JGL. Man. Everyone's he's just a, dancing in the park. Classy classy good actor. Time. Fuck that movie. Though. Hmm. Pat, I'm sorry that happened to you. But it, was it wasn't bad. Deserved. I just got, if I got fucking cock blocked. I was fifteen. Could have mm. got laid. Shout out to Kevin. Hope, hope you got out with, hope you got laid with that chick. Shouts out to hope Kev, you dog. It, Kevin. I'm gonna hope, actually go the opposite way. Fuck clip. you, Kevin. Oh man. Should, I mean, I this is kind of like stance, we were the guy that cock we were blocked you. No, we were battling for this chick. Like who would. Who would win? I mean, that's like, like the start of every like bad like horror movie, like Jumanji. Like, what if he set me up? Like, what if Kev set me up? Yeah, just like, Pat, I, I'm just <laughs> picturing. I'm just picturing Pat. Like, there's like the the red tape, like do not cross, buffet yeah, clothes, the, and Pat's like going underneath. I did. And then he's like, "Ooh, look at this shrimp!" And then he eating all this old old <laughs> no poop based no shrimp. shrimp. You probably ate some raw meat. And then on these cruise ships, there's mm. people from around the world, so you just got like they have, dif- they have different uh, health code viola- like health code standards on right? international Because you just waters. got some Aborigine guy who never has seen public like plumbing, and then all of a sudden he's on a cruise ship preparing your food. No, it's not that bad. No. it's close. <laughs> so speaking of they still uh, have standards consuming non-edible food one time in high school our Go buddy poop. uh keegs we went to a uh super new china buffet yeah and like we were all 
going through the lines and stuff, grabbing big plates. And then, like, everybody, like, looked over at him, and he's like, did you guys get this, uh, this red meat here? Like, it tastes a little funny to me. We're like, dude, you're literally eating raw meat right now. Like, he took it all, like, they were, he's supposed to give it to the chef to, like, the throw on the hibachi. Oh, he cooked oh, in front of him. Meat. He was just eating raw meat. So, so we're like, he dude, ate the this? hibachi meat oh <laughs> before it was cooked. God. We were like, dude, what the fuck? At least it was steak. Like, yeah. he could have ate chicken and died or it's pork. true. It's true. Yeah. He was just way too stoned. Mother of child. All right, all you kids out there trying weed for the first time. Cook your meat. <laughs> if it's cold, don't eat it. Yeah. All right, there we go. There you go. Do you guys want to do the the survey now, or do you want to wait a little bit? Just hit, it, hit it. All right, hit, so hit it I conducted a survey to try to combat these BuzzFeed regional word uh, quizzes. I just saw one pop up on the at uh, Turn Me Loose Pod Twitter handle, and it was 10 words that will uh, define what region of the country you're in or whatever. And so the first word that I chose was firefly versus lightning bug. And three of the four of us said lightning bug. Who what? said firefly? Pat. Nate, National Geographic over here said <laughs> Arizona <firefly>. boy. <laughs> the desert boy. We all concurred that it was a garage sale as to a yard sale. Mm-hmm. But um, we've all determined that we say you guys as opposed to y'all. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. We're not in the south. We're not in the south. We don't even say y'all. You guys. None of us say pop. We all say soda. Yeah, what am I, six? Soda. Let me get some pop, please. None of us refer to the garbage can as the garbage can. It's the trash can. No, when I die, throw me in the trash. Frank Reynolds. Duh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were split on water fountain and drinking fountain. Oh, interesting. Did you take I go a drink to the water or... fountain. It's a fountain that produces water. What do you call the fucking sink then? A sink? It's a fountain that produces water. Why isn't it just not the you don't water call, fountain? I call it a water sink. Well, they should all be. What did you just say? A water sink? A water sink. You what other call, call your sink? Sink a water sink. <laughs> Try to justify this. What? A, like a vegetable sink? A gravy sink? Take it over to the dish sink. Water sink. Wait, so who was. Uh, yeah, so right, Ben and I were sense. drinking fountain guys, and you guys were. Yeah. We were water, water fountain, fountain guys. guys. You got different kinds of fountains, people. It's, and they're all not all water fountains. Yeah. What about on the... what about that Keurig in there? It pours out hot water. Blah, 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 have blah, you blah, seen blah, blah. Mr. D? Is that a water fountain? This is what I call it. I don't have to just I hate explain it. Mr. D? What'd you say? Right. Go ahead. I would like a. Hawaiian yeah. punch? Hawaiian it's got a Hawaiian punch. punch in it. Uh. Pat refers to his shoes as sneakers. Sneaks. We call them tennis shoes. I always hmm. peek on sneaks. When do you ever say sneakers, Pat? I say shoes. Nah, and, he's right. I normally just would say shoes. And too. here's shoes. Shoes. where say tennis shoes. I was really baffled. So none of us call a sucker a lollipop. We all say sucker, except for Mike. He refers to them by the brand. So he will ask for... Or a blow pop or a dum dum. Or how did, you, how did you it's, actually it's put it? Lolly, lolly, let me see you pop that body. So that's how he that's refers fair. to suckers. <laughs> or he'll just say, give me that blow pop, bitch. They'll help you quit smoking cigarettes, too. But, um, Pat fact. Pat, Pat fact. Chantix. Fuck Chantix. All you need is some candy and some dank dumb ass weed. Dum dums and Fuck some dank Chantix. weed. Um. And the three of us say carry out instead of take out. Yeah, I like to place an order for carry out. Pat will dial the number and, and say, Hello. Yeah, I'd like to place an order to go. I'm just trying to place a to go to order. Go order. I think I've probably right. done that before. I will allow it. So is that our Turn Me Loose podcast, Bud? Yeah, I felt that Buzzfeed? the BuzzFeed articles were yeah, semi accurate. They're they're yeah, we fairly were all accurate. pretty regionalized. We are the things that we said. So just four. So that was the Midwest. That was our poll. Seeing how accurate accurate these Buzzfeed polls are. Yep. So we just they're we probably f- like 80, 85 percent accurate. That's pretty good. Yeah. Really bad. They got snoped. Snoped them hard. They snoped. 
All right. Flashlight. Well, flashlight. moving on. Rapper Bun B, one of the trillest in the game. He shot someone up. Shot an armed robber at his Houston home after the robber allegedly pulled a gun on his wife when she opened the door. Get him. Police said Bun B, whose real name is Bernard Freeman, exchanged yes. gunfire with the suspect when he tried to flee from the rapper's car. Uh, UGK's rapper's wife, Queen Freeman, had opened the door thinking Queen. it was a delivery. She told the suspect he could take a vehicle. Uh, her fear was that this was that he was going to try to target her husband, so she gave him the car keys and all the possessions that she had. Um, he robbed Queen. Rob Queen. No. Queen told Bun Bun B. He, sh- he killed him, didn't he? Queen told Bun B the suspect was in the garage with a gun. Bun B saw him in the driver's seat and fired shots at the suspect. Before the suspect tried to run, Bun B allegedly chased him, and Bun B said he saw him take his mask off, but the suspect got away. The suspected robber, uh, Demonte Alif Jackson, was later arrested at a local hospital. He has been charged with two counts of aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon and one count of burglary. Uh, he was shot Good. in the shoulder. Good. Mm. Bun B. You miss Bun B, but that's all right. R.I.P. Pimp C. But... Yeah, I wouldn't rob Bumby. No, I wouldn't That's rob anyone up. like that. Are you kidding me? I don't know who you're talking about. You, know, you don't know who Bun B is? Mm, I forget. I might know. I'm about to smack you right in the face. Just out of disrespect for the game. <laughs> you know, I'm disrespecting the game. <laughs> yeah, like man. You're gonna, if you're going to be a part of this podcast, you're going to have to step up your Bun B game. UGK? I don't know UGK. He's one half. Barely. He's half UGK. Actually, I don't know how deep like UGK third. runs, but all right, let's he's not one of the two main members. Let's not let's not think that UGK is just two people. UGK is a plethora, most likely. Hmm. All right, hmm. but speaking of, just wanted to give shouts out to Bun B. Make sure that you know he's he's doing all right. Uh, just wanted to reference that story because I thought Glad it was all right. I was pretty, pretty yeah. Uh, I mean that. If I may touch on this while we're on do. the subject. That just brings me to the point of, like, real rappers. Like, the hardcore, like, gangsters. Like, nobody's gonna question Bun B. Like, I would, he's rapping about the streets. He fucking lived it. If I'm breaking into a rapper's home, I'm breaking into, like, Lil Xan's home or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Or like, like, um, like uh, Post Malone. Yeah, I break into Post Malone's house. <laughs> Who's Lil that? Pump. The two white guys? Who's the white guy that came out? Are you gonna do Asher Roth next? <clears throat> that's what I said. Asher, that's what I wanted to say. Asher I'm just saying Roth. if I'm gonna break into his home... Who, which black rapper? I'm saying I don't like break into? Beck. Not to make it. Break. Uh, I mean, we could. <laughs> I think it's more of like a new age verse. Like yeah. now, it's like mainstream new age rappers like Lil Pump and like Kodak Black. Like I don't oh, think you would really worry. Kodak work. Black uh, maybe. is a dumbass. Though. He's been to prison. So well, did you not hear what happened to him? Maybe Kodak I Black. Know. Why would I hear had, what happened to all right, Kodak all right, Black? I hit you with the Kodak <laughs> Black. Story. Kodak Black fact of the week. I brought to you by Ben. First of all. <laughs> I don't even know who Kodak Black is. Never heard one song. And the fact that you guys brought him up is just I'm Destiny. For the streets, baby. I just read things out of Destiny. I don't know why. But this dude took off, I don't know from where, maybe like Ohio or somewhere. He had a show in New York. So we got on the GPS. Remember how I told you mm. the satellites are out right now and the GPS is kind of messing up? Oh, yeah. Well, this is also a thing to check your GPS route before you just trust a machine, people. The robot took him through Canada, hmm. so by the time he realized he needed his passport, it was too late. He was in the line. So we got through Canada all right. He came back into the United States. He got popped with guns and weed and all sorts of stuff. Fool. Yeah. Fool. I pity the fool. More of the story. Check where you're going, people. Know when you're leaving the country, for God's sakes. That's my Kodak Black Pack of the week. Yeah. I mean, while we're at it and we're talking about, like imaginary lines that we've drawn across our earth like i can't psyomachy yeah psyomachy maybe that's imaginary per- whatever keep going just like you know i can't go into canada i can't just walk into canada i have to have a fucking passport mm-hmm. it's whack imaginary bro. lines whack bro having a dispute <clears throat> with an imaginary border would be psyomachy <clears throat> boom which the most triggering thing is poles 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 oh got to pay the poll toll Pol- oh, they had tolls. Tolls and poles? We've been polling each other. So we have my been, we poll have been doing a poll. is how shitty tolls are. Poll toll. I like tolls. Yeah, I always thought tolls were fun. 
Do you like tolls? Tolls are fun, yeah, until you pay $9 to get 30 miles. Mm-hmm. And then you still hit 18 potholes along the way. You're going to take my money, fix the fucking roads. Got to pay for them streets. Hey. I do have some sports talk, though. Let's get into it. The WNBA games are going to now begin airing on the CBS Sports Network. A new deal has been announced to uh, have 40 games on NBA TV. Um, for the w- 20 games will oh. air on ESPN and the family of networks, and the CBS Sports Network will air and televise 40 regular season games during the upcoming WNBA season. Just a way for these deserving athletes to get more revenue into the sport and ultimately, hopefully, into their pockets. Hashtag get our ladies paid. Pay them, ladies. Pay them, ladies. And don't come at us on the Twitter handle <laughs> at we will, come at you. we will come at your fucking neck. There's four Talking people disrespect about the WNBA. Ready to come at you troll style about <laughs> the WNBA. <laughs> Don't well, start shit. Uh, uh, I'm on the fence about the WNBA. I'm guys. gonna fight you right now. The the Twitter handle, you know, it doesn't speak for all of us. You don't know who is actually behind the tweets because you guys were in some I'm hell of a enough. WNBA battle, and I like. I'm I'm halfway there. <laughs> you right. had oh you were probably side with the other Come coke, on. weren't you? You're just I, down because the fever haven't been good the past couple of seasons. I just can't get over the fact that I think like a state champion high school boys team could like probably beat the WNBA All Stars. That's ruthless. See, he is on the other side. I'd take the All Stars if we're taking if we're betting. I'd oh, I'll maybe not the All Star. You're team, talking to the guy who just bet on the team. Thunder who what won one game. I mean, that, I don't yeah. trust your bets Whatever. anymore. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying it'd be interesting to see. I'd say I would take the. WNBA do you think the All-Stars okay? So do you think the four A state basketball champion in Indiana could beat the WNBA champion team? I think it would be a is this, game. Is this, I think it would are be a Are you trying game. to have like the Alabama could beat the Cleveland Browns? Right no, there. it's not the same thing. Like, are you not. trying to say like the best high school team could beat the worst this is WNBA team? Are you saying that I think the WNBA All Stars could compete with the like the Come on, G man, they have Brittany Griner. Oh. Ooh. You think the WNBA No, no now could you're getting carried away. The G League. I think they could. Okay, if you're talking the McDonald's All Stars. No, I'm not. I'm talking about your standard high school boys basketball team. No, five I don't a, five agree. a top class. But if you're talking champion, if, if you are talking, and hear me <laughs> out, if you're talking the McDonald's All Star team versus the WNBA All Star team. No, I mean I know I'll these take girls. the McDonald's All Star team because yes. here's a fact: the the like state records in like high school are like equivalent to the women's like for track and field are equivalent to the women's like. Uh, Olympic, like they're better than the women's Olympic yes. world records and things like that. Like, like I'm not doubting that these girls have talent. I know that they are they're great shooters. They probably have good ball handling skills. They are Dan good Tarasi. at shooting free throws. Like they've got fundamentals. But when you're like when you're trying to post up some dude who's 215 pounds and six six, like it's not it's probably not gonna end. Okay, but that's well not your them. average high school basketball team. But they're out there. Okay, but I'm saying if you have one kid like that, I'm saying the WNBA team still wins. I'm on the fence about it. Like I said, I had to see it. All right. Well, we'll try to get that lined up. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna somehow get a uh... WNBA All Star team to face a boys high school team. Yeah. yeah. God, give them some credit. Jeez. No, I'm, talking, right. I'm not talking about your like one A like private school boys high school team. I'm talking I about know. like a like a state champion. I said of the, the I said the state yes. champion Indiana team could be WNBA All Stars versus WNBA. LeBron's son. His like, his high school. He's team. a freshman. Yeah, he's like 15. Exactly. That's what you want. They're the best of the best. <laughs> so now you're just going by blood lineage. Exactly. Hmm. All right. Well, we were talking about <laughs> blood lineage earlier. I mean, he's destined to be a lawyer apparently. And no. It's just how it is. True. And I'm Blood an range. artist. Look for my original drawings. Um, they'll be out there. I, I was thinking, I liked, I liked some of the drawings you did. I want to do some, I think we should learn how to do some digital um, coloring on them. Hey. Like you scan it in and then I I'm just, just digital coloring. I close my eyes and I, I just let the pen flow yeah. across the paper. That's just kind of, that's my, that's my artistic see. expression. You should do that with an easel. 
Speaking of great shooters, a 69-year-old Arkansas woman has been convicted of second-degree murder in the fatal shooting of her husband <laughs> after he ordered a pornography channel for their satellite television services. That was a order? hell of a segue, by the way, my man. <laughs> yeah. Shooters I'm a, shoot. I'm a professional. Shooters gotta shoot. <laughs> my they, God. He killed her? She murdered Wait. his ass. Because he, he watched just, porn? Was it, it was like not the first time. This is not the first time she brought it up. This was the second time. It's only the second time. Him. I don't understand if they're like 10 grand in debt or like fifth, like they have to put their house on mortgage like because they watch so much porn. They're buying that much porn. Who is this lady? Porn. Then I kill him. What was he, okay, here's out? two questions I have. What genre of porn was he watching uh, and what medium... And what medium Seriously. was he using? Was this a magazine? Was it an image? Was it a video? No, he was. No, it was, it was on. It was like pay per view. He oh, ordered. Pay-per-view. He paid That's for it. That's what I'm saying. And if it was some shitty Skinamax movie, like some softcore shit, if you got killed over some softcore stuff, where you don't even see the dong, you don't see nothing but skin. You should, uh, oh, Mr. Computer Man, you should look up the the stalker that sent 150 thousand text message. Oh, I've seen that lady to her. Uh, the person she met on one date. Yep. I remember that chick. She, like, doesn't blink. I can't believe they interviewed her. They interviewed her? Yeah. She was, like, interviewed. Ooh. It was insane. That's scary. Like, this that's guy scary. Got, she's, like, That means she got like 10 grand Ill. for that interview. You normally get about 10 grand for a solid interview. Hmm. Per I don't interview. know if I believe that at all. For yeah. any, like, uh, or to, like, go on, like, The Daily Show. It's, okay, like, like, they, they like pay a, you, like, 10 grand. Okay, well, yeah. She was, like, on, no, she was, like, so. on, like, a local, like, Oh, okay. TV it channel. Blew up. It was yeah, it blew up. Um, but according to the testimony here, Patricia Hill had previously Patricia Hill had, had previously canceled the pornography channel, but shot her husband twice after seeing a bill that showed the channel had been added again. He deserved it, sinner. Uh, what in what way does <laughs> does anything nonviolent need a violent act? He was probably so miserable. I bet that he was, was his wife. beating his meat. He just got put I out of his misery. I bet he hasn't got... If she's shooting him for porn, he hasn't gotten laid in years. He just got put out of his misery, dude. This was a mercy kill. Duh. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a mer- this was a guy who did something really bad to this so woman. He was so defeated. And he had to stay yeah. with her all these years because she was just been dead in. This is probably a man I wonder... who knew what would happen if he added that channel. <laughs> <laughs> and was going to live with the consequences. And he probably tried to get one last crank out. <laughs> I think it's, oh, you're going to kill me, bitch? You're going to kill me for a porno? Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Pow, pow. Do it. <laughs> white lady or black lady? I don't know. White lady for sure. That's what I'm saying. This sounds like a white lady crime. Oh, there she is. I got shooters. Patricia Hill. I got oh, shooters. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How old were they? She was 69. White lady for all you good So folk let's out assume there. he's in his 60s. Man, he should have just pulled a Robert Kraft. Mm. Darling, I gotta go get a massage. I'll be right back. And if he's bending it in half like Pat, he's gotta watch <laughs> a lot of Skinamax, too. I bet that was a hefty bill. Couldn't hide it. Well, he's 60, so he's gotta been, man. half dick now. He could have ordered, like, Playboy TV or something. <laughs> hmm. Well, well, R.I.P. Now, R- R- now she's going to be I stalking hope. those What's his name? jailbirds. Uh, they did not release his revenge. name because he was... What's her name? Patricia crime. Hill? Patricia Hill. So, Mr. let's have a moment Mr. of Hill. silence for Mr. Hill. All he wanted to do was get a crank in. Rest in peace. Hey. Speaking of rest in peace, Charlie, the oldest sea otter at any zoo or aquarium, mm-hmm. passed away. Oh. <laughs> this cute motherfucker. Is that the one that dunks? To see other, he was or 22 a river years old, um, okay, and Pretty yes, funny. he was featured in a section on. Oh no, he was not. But he was featured in a section on Senior Animals, in the 2018 Guinness Book of World Records. Ooh, how old was he? 22. Pat, can you describe to me the difference between a sea otter and a river otter, other than the fact that one's in the sea and one's in the river? Well, river otters you can find them in like Brazil or South America. And, uh, um, or even in like certain rivers in like Europe, we rarely get river riders in in the U.S. in the Midwest. Hmm. Interesting. I don't, I don't so think I've, all, I don't uh, think I've ever seen one. You might get them confused with like a muskrat. Yeah. It's like a skin little weasel. 
or a skin, a skin weasel. I mean, a thin, skinned, a thin, uh, hairless, a thin weasel. But um, I don't know. Sea otters they float on their backs and get eaten by great white sharks. Mm, Okay, Hmm. they're the ones that eat the clams, right? They break the clams Mm -hmm. over the belly. Yeah, and they hold hands when they sleep so they don't fall away from each other, float away from each other. Sea otter fact. Facts. They like to. Uh, clamp on to sea kelp and they just like float there just like a little and the hide in the kelp from the sharks and seals hmm. but they're like pretty otters. cool I like I like the squeak of a sea otter versus the squeal of a river otter those things squeal like pigs is there any Squee- way we can get some sound <laughs> up in this bitch of the difference between a sea otter squeal and a river one, otter one's just like one oh, <laughs> All right. So okay, so going. what's the other one? And the one's just what? like. <laughs> so which ones? Which ones? Which? So which ones? <laughs> that's the the sea otter. That's so definitely sea otter. Quack, 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 quack. That's, that's a river. I can tell. That's, that's a river, river otter. otter. That's, that's definitely river otter. otter. Those annoying fucking. So they're the fucking I'm, doves of the why, river world. That's why we need videos. The crows. Well, no, those I'm, doves. I'm coming at you with more. With more otter-related news. I like otters. What? I got more otter-related news for you guys. Okay. Oh, please. We're going ham on this right yeah. now. Yeah. So last year, the southern Japanese city of Suzaki created I don't like a where position. This is going. Suzaki! The honorary tourism ambassador for a real-life otter with a large social media following. It was very cute. Um, then, a rogue mascot named Chitan, who is unsanctioned, Basically, it's just a giant mascot of a sea otter that just started claiming that he was the city's official mascot. Oh, I've seen that guy pop no up law. on the Yeah, John Oliver did a piece on it this week on his show, but uh, it's basically just a rogue mascot who just created a, a social media following that rivals the original, if not surpasses the original like point of the sea otter, like attracting tourism to the city. But this dude just does like crazy ass stunts like he jumps over like a weed whacker and tries to push over cars and it's just really destructive like he <laughs> his name's threatens. Cheetah yeah Cheetah Cheetah um, Cheetah Cheetah give me strength but here's so Cheetah's just a bastard yeah like, otter. he's Cheetah like the, bastard he's like the otter. mascot of the people you know like they tried to say like this is your savior right, here's like an example Cheetah, of like one of his the videos. bastard barman Cheetah, he'll take your stuff Cheetah, bastard barman Cheetah, the otter with the stuff Cheetah. he's taking out a baseball so bat from the locker Brian. and Cheetah. stuffing it into his mascot uniform via the boot oh, so he's just got a baseball bat now yep and he's the caption is Cheetah, I'm going to visit your house Jesus. <laughs> I'm pro Cheetah. I'm pro Cheetah. That was very interesting. I like that. I can see why the government officials do not, though. Yeah, he's a rebel. He's a rebel without with a cause. Yeah, he is. He, yeah. cheetah has got a cause. We'll figure it out. I just wanted to give Cheetah a shout out. Cheetah. He's such a rascal. Cheetah. Thank you, stuff. Cheetah, he'll make you smile, and then he'll club you with that baseball bat. Cheetah, Cheetah. It's like Sour Patch Kids, but Japanese style. Orange and bright. Cheetah. Sticking with the animal theme and kind of touching on a subject we talked about last week, the honeybees in the Notre Dame roof have survived the fire. There were three hives that were located on the roof uh, around 100 feet below where the main damage was to the cathedral. I think they said there was... I'm trying to look for the exact number of bees. <coughs> like Probably 80. all passed out and fell on the floor from the smoke. From the smoke, yeah. Womp. Just imagine that. Thousands of bees. Just yeah. <laughs> What's your opinion on bees, Pat? I think we got to save them. Well, I'm tempted to say the bees versus black people joke, but oh, do it! You've already tempted them. You've already tempted them. Go ahead, bud. Um, bees are cool. I don't have a problem with bees. Uh, the coolest thing about bees, if you own like a mansion or if you own like a lot of land, like a lot of celebrities, 
Mm. They'll buy like a bunch of bee farm, beehive things and say, claim that they own a bee farm. Like Bon Jovi does it. Like, uh, I think Keith Richards does it too. But, like a bunch of these, a bunch of people have like bee farms so they can, uh, claim it. If you have taxes. a farm, you don't have to put, you don't have to put the, uh, property tax. Yeah. Pay property tax. But, um, smart. Fuck that. All those bees on your land. The worst They're thing. Contained. I don't know. You can't contain a bee. And you can sell their honey. Or you can drink it all. The nectar of the It is eyes. fascinating to cut through honey. I like bees a lot. Post They're a couple cool. of those videos to our TMO. 180,000 bee bees. Oh. What are saved from. Hey, the I know church. bees were like in trouble for a while. People were wearing that. Shout they to Jerry were Seinfeld. like dying everywhere. Do we start saving them? Trying to. But we They're still in danger. Suck. They're still in danger. Uh, yep. It's fucked, bro. I'll still smash them. Right now, people are starting to worry about flooding. I had one stuck on my porch, my screened-in porch, and I put it in a jar, and I took it outside this week. Mm, nice. Hashtag yeah. save the bees. I would have smashed it. I know. One time when I was in second grade, we were at recess playing soccer, and I was running around on the grass field, and I, like, I don't know if, uh, I was running, and a bee flew right into my mouth. <laughs> and like, like stung me on the tongue uh-huh. and I like spit it out and like stomped on it and like ran to the nurse I was pretty freaked out what? <laughs> I put my foot over a bee hole once and learned I'm standing by the bus this was in first grade and then when the bus showed up I released my foot and then hundreds of bees came out Jesus Christ I think it stung on the tongue but yeah dude Both of those that, was that was the first time I'd ever been stung by a bee too it was in the mouth <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of an in the mouth sting. Like, That's cool. That is a tender spot, my friend. I knew someone that got stung in the eye, and then like seeing like Jesus. it swell up was pretty bad. Oh. My God! Like not on the eyeball, but like around like the it still wasn't the lid. in the mouth sting. I think that's the only time I've been stung by a bee too. Uh, it was in the mouth a couple times. I'm very cautious. I never got moment. stung as a child, and I've really have never been stung because as a kid, I was afraid of things that were green, so I didn't give them the grass. That's a fact. Anything that was green, I would start screaming. Look out for the tall grass. Wasn't even that. I don't know. I think it was because my parents got me a kiddie pool that was also a crocodile at the same time when I was really, really small and it was green. And I just always thought that crocodile was going to eat me, so... I associate anything green with a crocodile kiddie pool. Yeah. That was a weird What would Cheetan do, Ben? Cheetan. Cheetan would have fucking went in there and smacked my mom in the mouth. <laughs> Told her to quit being a bitch. Get rid of that fucking thing. Uh, Throw him in the deep end. Make a man out of him. And then he'd sit there. He'd go to the fireplace and he'd grab the iron rod that he's been stoking up and then you brand my mom right in the fucking forehead and say cheat on cheat on I burn your forehead cheat on <laughs> you'll be mine forever mark me cheat on did you guys see the video of the chimpanzee scrolling through Instagram I Ooh. saw that it's pretty funny god damn it it's pretty scary I'm not it's, Instagram right? yeah it's uh it's quite a look in the mirror and uh, I don't know how much I, I like it, you right. know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. He's just in the back. And, and like, I, I, the f- part that I enjoyed the most was that, that was his finger. many of the videos that. that he was pulling up were, like, with other chimps in them. So yeah, the ones, like, that he wa- the ones that he stayed on had the other chimpanzees in them. <laughs> he's just scrolling Look, he's chimp watching, feeds. He's watching a yeah, chimp video. So he's getting joy out of... <laughs> Watching other chimps. I bet if you gave him access to chimp pornography on that, he would (laughs) prioritize that over the other videos. Like, we gave him thousands of hours of video footage, but he just keeps watching the chimps bang each other. That that hot (laughs) chimp with the hot tits. No, just put one on there, just jerking its chain. Just see if he starts jerking his chain. Yeah, I thought it was just a pretty. Uh, it's where we come from, folks. Pretty, Pat's pretty. pretty gross Pat's pretty mirror. enthralled by that video. How do you Why feel about that? That's to be that's enthralled a, by. That's it. That's a pretty cool. That was a pretty old and pretty wise chimp. He wasn't that old, but he was like eight years old. Or I assume. You think he knows sign language? Yeah, he's probably one of those dudes. 
So like the orangutan. He's like a VI. Yeah, they don't just give any chimp out there. Like I want to know phone. like like this chimp has put is his it, is time. Is the Apes right? Is the orangutan the smartest monkey? Hmm. But weren't they like the silent ones? Yeah, he was the one that like could speak to Caesar, the mm. ruling chimp. Yeah, the smartest monkey. So his like his his king's hand was an orangutan. Glad you're basing your. <laughs> I want to say the <laughs> knowledge of knowledge of apes primates on. on uh, I feel like Planet, Planet of the Apes did extensive primate research. It's got to so be I'm pretty gonna, accurate. Gonna, like, right? Gorillas say, are your uh, brutes. Yeah. You know, gorillas are the ones that are gonna get your job done. They're the ones that are gonna torture and get the facts out. Your orangutans are the ones that are gonna build your economy and you know s- s- sustain your political parties agenda. And, yeah. You know, lead your communities, and then the chimpanzees are just your fill-ins. What I didn't like was they didn't get any, like, littler monkeys on there. Like, I wanted some lemurs hopping around. I wanted some fucking... Compuchin? You wanted some cross what was, species. What was that? Compuchin? Mm-hmm. Is that the Ace Ventura monkey? Uh-huh. I had a fucked up dream about that monkey. You wanted a Kikachu? Kikachu. Is that a monkey? Yeah. All right, Pat, chill. It's a, it's a marsupial, technically. Yeah, I had a dream about a voodoo witch doctor in the bayou. And she was just giving birth to, what did you call that monkey? The Ace marsupial. Ventura the I forget now. Ace Ventura monkey. Contino. Konichis or whatever. Konichis. And it was like, they were like demon monkeys. And Kapuchin. she just kept like, it was like a really gross Kapuchin. mental image too. Like I got a full view of this lady. Yeah, do you guys dream? This guy, does, this guy says he never I don't. Dreams. That's why I'm so excited right now because I never have dreams. And when I do have a dream, it's just like a witch doctor like giving birth to monkeys and then they all try to eat me. Like those are my dreams. But honestly, most nights it's just darkness. I black out. I don't have any dreams. So when I do dream, I wake up and I want to write it down and like turn into a feature length film because it was so amazing. Start writing down your dreams. You're playing a dangerous game, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm glad you agree with me, Pat. Big yeah. facts. Uh, it's true though. No, I don't dream. I don't dream either. We're just I mean, I've gone dream. through a phase where like, I was you know, trying to keep in a dream journal, doing all that shit, and then I was like, no, I'm you done with this shit. I think actively further. trying to lucid dream. I, yeah, I have done that like twice. It's pretty <laughs> fucked up. I've lucid yeah. dreamed a couple times. I've lucid I wake up though times. every time. Yeah. It's yeah, hard. Yeah. It's harder to keep Because you get like excited. Yeah. I usually, wake up. It's usually when I'm in a deep sleep and I have to wake up and take a piss. And what gets me is, mm-hmm. at some point, I re- uh, there's water, and I think, oh, I gotta take a pee, I'm asleep. Bring it up. <laughs> that's yeah, your, that's your trigger. Piece. That's my trigger, <laughs> so I usually just taking a piss. Uh, like, well, in, had, like Inception, I had one, like when... I had a dream with uh, a mirror the other day, and it was super fucked up. Like Mirror dreams. Like my face was melting. My face you were, like, was, looking like, in the mirror, and you're like, and then I'm like, dream. But that's one of the triggers for the lucid dream, is you have to recognize that you're not, like... If you see that, that's how you know you're in a dream. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think I found a place so for us to go. Mega messing with you. I think I found a place for us to go and share our dreams. TMOP road trip. We're going to Plymouth, Pennsylvania. Oh. Uh-huh. Because okay. twice a month, half a dozen men gather in Plymouth to meet, to help each other work through their past traumas. Their chosen method of healing. Butt hash. Cuddles. Oh, it may seem odd, but members of the men's cuddle group say their practice has helped them cope with everything from childhood sexual abuse to the loss of family members when they were young. So it's just a bunch of dudes getting in a bed cuddling each other? It sounds other. nice, but there's some, some, some deeper going on There's here. a lot of boners yeah. being popped. Like, I get one stab in the back, I'm out. And you say a hat, like, that's not even that many dudes. It's just like a couple got like, six dudes, like... This isn't like a club or anything. Yeah, they're ordering children somewhere and doing bad things. Like, At the beginning of the session, everyone agreed not to engage in sexual touch and to ask for consent before each action. They gathered in a huddle and breathed meditatively. Hmm. Cuddling started with men pairing up to do the motorcycle hug. <laughs> <laughs> For the second half of the session, the men the cuddled as one large group in what they call... A this, puppy pile. The back, like <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> it's, Don't do that. It's the, uh, it's the Kim and Kanye. It's Where the bound it? video. Where the fuck did you find this article? 
Why do I not find stuff? My a goodies. puppy pile. The puppy pile. This See, I was going to call it the centipede. I figured it was just like a line of people, and they're just like... Yeah, you think they're just cuddling the Dick peak. to ass, as far as the eye can this see. This is in the Atlanta News Now. <laughs> Atlanta? Atlanta News Now. There's a couple... But it's in There's Plymouth. a couple places. That's what I'm saying. Why is it There's, there's a couple places that have posted We should go, dude. If the TMLP I'm not podcast showed up. Podcast. <laughs> You cannot. We have to draw straws. Loser has to get in the puppy pile. <laughs> in the puppy pile, the men lay with their heads <laughs> in one another's laps, and while they <laughs> chat and they joke. You're not down for it, but the, <laughs> just just pure from an odds perspective, that one of the other three of us could do it. You're in. Uh, all right. I do. I would like to see someone's head in someone else's laps. I think laughing. we should just do our own puppy pile right here. <laughs> no, he just tried. He just touched my back, and I had a brain aneurysm. What the like. fuck is a puppy pile? They lay. They like lay. Like you lay your head on someone's lap, and someone lays their head on your lap, and so forth and so forth. So and it's, it's like a, a millipede, not a centipede. But it has. It's no correlation to like your standard dog. Oh, pile. it's head to dick as far as the eye can see. Mm-hmm. Uh, back of the head to the dick. It's not sexual, duh. All you it's gotta do is a little bit of this. Together. It's, it's called static, my friend. It's friends. just a bunch yeah. of guys getting together, cuddling, laying on each other's laps. She told me if someone pops off, a, I say something. I like. I rattle off a funny zinger, and it happens to be sexual, and I make the perv behind me pop a boner because it reminded him of some shitty stuff that happened to him in the past. It's going to bang me in the back of the head. Oh, not only that, it's going to be a chain reaction. He pops one, the whole rest of the pile is going to start popping off. If he pops one, that means yeah. the only one who's going to get it's that reaction is me. You're saying I'm going to immediately pop a boner after getting ricocheted <laughs> well, in the back of the head with his bone? No, the dude that he has his head on his dick will be able to feel the energy force. He will also pop one. Yeah, it's like a period. So for, it's like a domino effect, women. but of erections. Yes. It's contagious. How often does this happen? It's not contagious. <laughs> is it, you said every six months? Um, they, they get together once. twice a month. Twice. <laughs> twice. So, so two, uh, right. It's a this bi-weekly a, affair. So as many times as I get paid a month, these guys are laying in each other's laps. Are they married men? Puppy pals. Guys, it's not sexual. It's it's a healing process. I think they're just all sorts of men. They're, they they're gotta, men of all they faiths, sexual orientations. There's got to be a couple gay guys. Oh, there's something fishy. I think yeah. we, I think we need to send in one of us to figure out what's going. And what's then, really like, going on. Are they here. accepting both men and women? Like, no, no. Just... It's a men's cuddling club. It's a men's men's only. Own, oh, Pat, you total oh. one more car. You'll be, a, you'll be in the puppy pile before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. They gotta be. There's something going on there. Hey. Ryan here from the Turn Me Loose Podcast, and I want to tell you about a product that I fully endorse, Nature's Bounty Once Daily Probiotic. Nature's Daily Once Probiotic is the only once daily probiotic that can keep my shit regular, and Nature's Bounty won't offer you this guarantee, but I guarantee this product will give you a solid three or four on the Bristol stool chart. And if you aren't satisfied with your bowel movement after using this product, I will personally come to your home and help you with your at-home enema. Now that's a guarantee. Get your bottle of Nature's Bounty Once Daily Probiotic at a local pharmacy or Walmart location near you. Now, back to the show. Ben's Big Word of the Week. 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 So, Ben, what is today's word of the week? First of all, guys, the intro. Mwah! Like an Italian chef kissing his cheese. I don't know. Meatballs. Whatever. He's an Italian mm. chef's kiss. Pasta. Well, anyway, this week, I know everyone's on edge, as always, folks. When you hear the word, pause it. Write in the comments what you think you might the word might be. So... Without further ado, this week's word, terophile. Terophile? Terophile. Terophile? Terophile. Terophile. How much fun you got there? You got terophile. Hang on, do that again. again. Terophile. 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 Spell it. Terophile. T-U-R-O-P-H-I-L-E. Oh, wow. 
Turofile. <laughs> hey, you have to make me look down because you whipped your phone at me. Turofile. It's not spelled see. anything like I anticipated. Turofile. Turofile. Now I'll give you about 10 seconds to meander think. Hmm. hmm. This is where well, you can pause it, folks. Write your comments below. Tell me what you think a turofile is. And we are hot. Pat, give me your definition. Well, Turo. I'm thinking of like Turok, like video game. That's a that's a good ass video game. Turok, chop 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 chop. We're gonna get you. Isn't that where he gets whisked back in time and fights dinosaurs? He does, and he has weird, weird, really weird weapons. Isn't he like also like John Redcorn from King of the Hill? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about that one, but uh, terrifying. So, so I think it's just Turok. I think it's an organized religion. That's a good ass guess. Turophilia. Like some no. Some kind of organized something. A file. Turophile? Pedophile. All the files. I was thinking about that too. Turophile. Someone who's obsessed with turtles that fucks turtles. Turtophile. An obsession of turtles. Turophile. Or what was the first thing you said? Organized religion. An organized religion or someone who is a turtle fucker. And Everyone who's got an obsession doesn't mean they want to bang them. An obsession with turtles could be pleasant. I thought you, you, I thought you literally said that they fuck turtles. Uh, I thought that was your did answer. you call him a turtle fucker? No. Right. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I heard obsession. I'm just running. I'm just running through ideas in my head. So I think a turophile <laughs> is an organized. It's like an organized religion of turtles. No, it's like terrestrial. So what's terrestrial? Terrain. Terrain. I think it's just like a big plane that's like a big group of planes, like not fissures, but like. (laughs) (laughs) Always fissures with you. Wait, planes, not like aeroplanes, like 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 meadows. a, A plane. (laughs) <laughs> Great Plains, <laughs> where the buffalo roam. <laughs> Meh. Give me an answer and let's move on here, Great Plains. Turrophile. I can't even tell you, dude. That's a hard one. That's it, not supposed to be easy, buddy. Ooh. I'm stumped. You stumped me. Need an answer from you. Do, 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 do. I'm going back with the, back to the pedophiles. I think it's a pedophile that's been charged twice, a double pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Game over. That's right. So it's like it it's, it's like a turkey. It's not like a pedo. He becomes a turro. <laughs> so it's like an evolved form. Yeah. <laughs> the best answer <laughs> but no that is wrong good sir uh, bravo from every word that went I liked your final answer alright Minkus in the sweatshirt well two words come to mind as always I try to break down the to. essence of the word so I'm with Pat I'm getting the file part of pedophile so like it's an obsession of something but I don't know what. So I was trying to think of words that started with Turo. Turo. Yeah. Like an obsession of what? Turo. And I thought. Turo. Like tur- you get out of this. You've already <laughs> said it's a, it's a dual pedophile. That was good. I was thinking tarantula. And I was thinking, why is a tarantula called a tarantula? And I had no fucking idea. But I was like, that's a big ass hairy spider. So I think it is an obsession with hair. <laughs> no, Damn. you were wrong. Oh, <laughs> Good one, though. Way to break down that word, as always, English guru. So I'm, thinking, I'm not thinking terrarium. I've just ruined it for Pete. Terrarium. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's Pete. nothing to do with terrarium. Okay, okay, as long as it doesn't have anything to do with terrariums, I can go. So. There's a bug on the wall. 
like you guys, I I jumped to pedophile immediately. I was like the file, turtle file, <laughs> I pedophile. I knew everyone would. Now I'm thinking turnstile. I don't know why I'm thinking of turnstiles. Um, <laughs> then I'm also thinking of turbo, which for some reason makes me think of speed racer. So now I've got speed racer on my mind. <laughs> um, so turnstile. It's gotta be an obsession with something. I think you guys are right about that. An obsession with speed. An obsession with speed. What kind of speed? A need for it. Kind you of got speed. your fast adrenaline kind of speed, and then you got your speed that you snort. Oh no, I'm talking about like need for speed. Yeah, baby. yeah, like miles per hour. Like get me up there. Like you got a monkey in your trunk, you gotta go. Yep, that's what I'm going with this week. Need for speed. Obsession for survey says you're wrong. Boys, you're all, I mean, you all had the right idea. Obsession, need an obsession with something. How about heat? Is it heat related? Heat. You just you're on it now. You should start saying a bunch of different things. No, it's not heat. I kind of gave you a little hint at the beginning when I was talking about the Italians. What did I say the Italians uh, like to fuck with? It's almost like a game of Clue. If you were paying attention, you could have got this week's episode or Monkey this week's word. Fuck you. Fuck you, fag. <laughs> Pasta. Cheese. The cheese obsession. The turophile is an obsession with cheese. My mortal enemy. I'll My fiance exactly. is a turophile. So I asked her what she liked to eat. One of uh, you know when you're first getting to know somebody? Mm-hmm. I was like, what do you like to eat? And she said, cheese and bread like things. Mm. Turophilia. Yep, so... Turophiliac. You should... Turophiliac. You should, Turophiliac. One day when she gets home from work, you should just be on the bed covered in mozzarella. Oh, shredded mozzarella. No, do something more classy. Like, put some... Asiago. Like a, like a Gouda schmear. Oh, you start schmearing it, you better start dunking the balls. I'm going for the balls. Speaking of balls, <laughs> that's exactly where I was going with my shit talk segment. Perfect segue, yet again. We always do. So... Might as well talk a little shit, boys. And I'm going straight to the point. Are you guys balls ticklish? Or do you enjoy ball play? <laughs> I My balls are ticklish as fuck. Like, anytime anybody has ever tried to go down there, like, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to knee them in the face. Because I'm going to flinch so hard. Hey, uh, Steve Carell. Exactly. Yes. I like it. And the hang, the hang low, and they're fun to play with. I never play with my balls, but with girls, I like with girls play with them. Oh, you nice. never play with your balls? That's real believable. No, when I jack I'll off, give a, like I a don't. nice squeeze at the end. To I get don't, I'm not doing like a one, two, three, and a one, two, Jesus. three. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wait, mine's more of like a pain. Oh, what's I got a, three balls though? So, what's a cock ring <laughs> used for? Say that again. Cock ring. What is a cock ring for? Yeah, is that for your balls? They have like ball cock rings and like cock rings and can't like, say I'm familiar. It's to all like not on the circulation. It's to get like a hard on longer or something. It's yeah, the, it's for so it's like all right. It's what we were talking about yesterday. You know when you when you snap your dick in half. You know if you got one like you went some a little hard on it. Some people do that apparently. Like someone tried to. And you snap your dick in half, yeah. and you said it, it like swells up real big. That's the whole principle of the cock ring. Hmm. You. Fucking put this rubber band at the base of your wiener. Keep and all then, that blood in there right when it gets fresh and hard. Right, I thought, so you, then, I thought you put it around your whole thing, like the dick and then around the balls. No, you like do. Like oh, yeah, is the not like the like whole around your sack. base of the shaft. Around everything. Yeah, it's just the like base of the shaft. Just, you're trying to cut <laughs> off some circulation to make your rod a little bit bigger without the penis pump. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'd say there's some, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely ticklish, you know? Not like I'm gonna kick you in the face. Uh, I'm worried. I gotta start giggling. Mm. Now I got Hansel <laughs> and Gretel down there. They're a little deformed. Also depends on if you're uh, if you've, if you've cleaned it up. If you've done some manscaping, like if you're if you're trimmed or if you're shaven clean, I think that makes an impact. I think it does. Yeah, it does. I usually yeah. try to maintain pretty clean. I agree. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Hansel what about uh? It's more like Beowulf and Grindel. What's your stance on teabagging the chick? Personally, never done it. I I would be in favor. I think this guy has. I've done a lot of things. <laughs> I'm not proud of. <laughs> yeah, 
it's just not appealing to me. I just don't like, like I said, I got Beowulf and Grendel down there. Right. I don't like, I don't like, that's not my like feature I'm trying to throw out there. And it doesn't really give me any pleasure as well. So personally, I'm not like begging for the nut play. Unless like he said, like you want to squeeze it at the end, give old Beowulf down there, oh! you know, his get off the last little seepage out. But other than that, nah, don't, don't fuck with them. You'll get judo chopped, most likely. I play with my balls judo more when I take a piss than when I jack off. Hmm. Just a ding ding ding. You're pulling out your balls when you take a piss? I got a urinal? Mm, I think so, yeah. Yeah, with, <laughs> the, with the whole thing out, yeah. Okay. Yep. Fair. So balls and all, you just go all the way down. You're not just taking your piss and moving along, you're like... Un- you're like getting comfy for a minute. Have you ever had a scenario in your whole entire life for you? I mean, you could have been drunk or you could have been just a child. It doesn't matter. Or it could have been a month ago and there was nothing wrong with you. Have you ever pulled your pants down completely at a urinal and lifted up your shirt to take the pee? Yeah. Hmm. Just for the principal? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean like people in the restroom. Just to be funny. Oh. Just to be that jackass. Yeah. Would, Did though. I do that? I ran around the town in a no, anthem in a pink <laughs> cowboy hat for your guys' pleasure. You did like point, attention. So. You were I wonder if I could dig up that video. I'm pretty oh, sure my don't. mother still has it. And Somewhere. if I ever do find it, we will put it out there. Yes, there was a time in our lives where we would make him run around in man thongs and... <laughs> Around my neighborhood and just see. No, it wasn't happened. around the neighborhood. We were like going out, we like, to, like he did. He did go shit. to like Kinko's. We ran in front of like Kinko's, Kinko's and around the Speedway. Speedway did call station. the cops. Yeah. So you were like out about the town. Hashtag classic. We also did write things in snow in our neighbors. Bro, profane. I made the largest. I drew a giant Pac-Man eating like a, a jizz shot from a giant cock across the span of two yards. You were, awesome. You've always been an artiste. You know how always you do this, folks? You jump into a snow pile and you just start you just training words. You just kind of like scoot your feet like a robot across the snow and like a train. chug, chug, chug your way to a nice chug, Pac-Man chug, chug, eating chug, dick. Chug, 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 Pac-Man eating dick. Well, my ball, my ball talk really kind of sprung from this tweet from Bill Ratchet, at Bill Ratchet. He said, bro, I hate that shit when they do the pop that shit like a lollipop. I'd be kicking like a fish out of water. Well, that's a lot of words there, bud. Like when they... Like a sucker? Yeah, like when they put their... Like a sucker. When they suck on Grendel or Beowulf like a sucker. Don't fuck with Grendel. Grendel's the deformed (laughs) one. Beowulf's the strong and mighty one. (laughs) It's kind of like that, but yeah, that shit is wild. Yeah. I've always Fair. had ticklish balls, never been able to get into the ball play. Yeah, that is like one of my worst I kind of wanted to know what I was missing. Because it's, what is it? It's only, it's between five and seven pounds of pressure it takes to pop a nut. That's, mm. it. That's a fact. That's not a lot of pressure. You could do folks. that with a human jaw. Easily. Easily. Someone, you know, you're sitting there, she got a nut in the mouth, and then all of a sudden, daddy comes home with a shotgun, or boyfriend, whoever... Bangs in the door. She's got nut and mouth. All of a sudden, clamp. Emergency room. You got one ball. You got Fuck. one. Oof. Seven pounds of pressure Aww. is all it takes. Hmm. All right. This is turning into a nightmare segment. Oh, yeah. My nuts hurt now. Thanks, bud. Pat, do you have a quandary today? Yeah, get us out of this mm-hmm. ball talk, okay. please. I also have a quandary, just for the record. Ah. Ooh, we got a dual quandary. Dual quandary. Fat and be quandary. Fat and be quandaries. Fat and be quandaries. That's the X Files theme. That's supposed to be the X Files theme song. Squeak, bop, boop. Quandary. So, I was at a sex shop over the weekend. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I was at uh, Cirilla's right over here. Are you just checking it Cirilla's. out? You just were driving by so many times. You're like, I don't even check uh, this place out. I was oh. trying, trying to get laid, and uh, I went in to get some condoms and uh, some lube. But to be honest, the only reason why I went in there was to check out their uh, images. Uh, no, I wanted to get lube because I wanted to. Uh, you never know when you might need it. Because <laughs> uh, I'm a dry guy, and I wanted to try jerking off for the first time with lube. Standing up. Alright, I was going to say, you want to... Oh. <laughs> so 
<laughs> tried it out. If you're going to stand up, you need lube. You might as well just do two things at once. Yeah. So yeah, the girl stood me up, so I went home and just jacked off standing up with lube. Did you... <laughs> Attaboy, Pat. Did you... Uh, I, Fuck yeah, I tripped dude. all over the ground. It was gross. Nice. Ew. Oh, yeah, <laughs> part I used way too much lube. On the carpet. Way too much lube, so the lube was dripping, not your semen. Yeah, you used like a quarter of the bottle. Oh I was my like, God, that's a lot of lube. Did you get flavor lube and lick your hand afterwards? No, I didn't. You should. A lot of people do I'm that. I'm just kidding, guys. I didn't use that much lube. <laughs> but yeah, it was good. It was good. Oh. It was a good experience. Uh, but then it also had me thinking. Like I was looking at these. Uh, did you like, wait? Did you Captain Morgan it? Yeah. Nice. On the toilet. All right. I did one foot on the toilet and then one. You, aim, aim it's it like down. You, you've learned. Yeah. I tried all different ways first. Gosh, like, I feel like he's graduating. He's growing up right before our eyes. Right. I don't, know, it was just weird. I don't like jerking off in the bathroom. It's just gross in there. Yeah. Do you look at yourself in the mirror a lot more than you look at your images? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but I was at the fucking sex shop. I'm looking at flashlights and these uh, um, these new flashlights. So they're like 150 bucks. Oh. They're and close. I put I spend 100 150 bucks on bongs. Why not just buy a bong I can fuck? <laughs> is that your quandary? It is a good quandary. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think. This so, is so, pretty much, like, it's called the auto blow. So, and it's what, kind of like what you guys were looking at earlier, but. Uh, yeah, what was that? Fully thing? automated? Hands free? Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. like this one, you you add water to it, and it's like getting a, getting a blow job. So, apparently. But then they also have one that's like. You fill it with water, and it's shaped like an ass, and it's shaped <laughs> like a like a, like basically like a back torso, and you fuck it, and like you can spank it and stuff. And I'm like, this is just like why not? Like I don't know, this. You're about to. It's, get, a, it's getting out of control, and it's your get, interest was. It's spiked. getting a. Uh, it's getting too crazy for us uh, lonely pervs out there. It's, You're about to move into a place by yourself and have yeah. some weird ass stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> You're about to have a room committed. You're going to get an auto blow. Committed to your robots. That's my auto blow in the corner machines. over there. And... Oh, this yeah, is my man. fuck machine Don't room. touch that rag. Uh, yeah, don't go in that closet. <laughs> you see anything? I should ask for one for my birthday. Yeah, it would go over well. Maybe that would go over well. Yeah. Yeah, she'd never touch you again. She'd probably get it for you. 100, best 150 she ever spent. For her, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's the whole point here. It's the future, man. <laughs> Oh, you want a blow tile? <laughs> That's all that lady I saw we talked a about vibrator. Earlier. I saw really? a vibrator with a mother clucking tongue on it. Mm. To yeah. stimulate the clitoris. That's all that dude so. needed that got shot earlier. Yeah. You need an automator. You just needed an auto blow. Yeah. Automator, baby. Automatic cock sucking. RIP to Mr. Hill. Take another moment of silence real quick. Yeah, another moment. He died because he liked to beat off. Now rest. I would have died like a hundred thousand times. Just to beat off. Not if I would have gotten married. Oh. Like, he like you're saying if you got married to her, you would have died a lot. You would have died a lot sooner. Well, she was probably a horn dog and gave it to him a lot, and then she got old and dried up and stopped it, and he didn't want it anymore. She did, look like, to... she did look like a Scooby-Doo victim. Or not a victim. She looked like a Scooby-Doo villain. Like she when did. you unmask someone. Yeah. Just I like... would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for that meddling... Porno. Porno. Situation. Ultra Instinct Shaggy. <laughs> Ultra Instinct Shaggy. Well, we'll Alright, so my query you. goes quite a different direction. Thank God. Oh. Wanderies for days, folks. And... I want to talk to you guys about something called the Fermi Paradox. You may or may I'm not have so heard of it. Interested. Mm. So I'll read you a brief description of it. The Fermi Paradox seeks to answer the question of where the aliens are. Given that our star and Earth are part of a young planetary system compared to the rest of the universe, and that interstellar travel might be fairly easy to achieve, the theory says that Earth should have been visited by aliens already. As the story goes, Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, most famous for creating the first nuclear reactor, came up with the theory with a casual lunchtime remark in 1950. The implications, however, have had extraterrestrial researchers scratching their heads for decades since. 
Fermi realized that any civilization with a modest amount of rocket technology and an immodest amount of imperial incentive could rapidly colonize the entire galaxy. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, S-E-T-I, Institute in Mount View, California, said on its website, within 10 million years, every star system could be brought under the wing of the empire. 10 million years may sound long, but in fact, it is quite short when compared with the age of the galaxy, which is roughly 10,000 million years. Colonization of the Milky Way should be a quick exercise. Hmm. So what you're saying is, is once we actually start the ship a moving we're going to control the galaxy well this actually ties into another theory it's it's a part of a bigger conspiracy really that it's already been done and we're in a simulation so, multiverse type shit so it's matrix all going over to, yes exactly god damn it <laughs> this are isn't the matrix the, are we the first civilization statistically based on the age of the universe no. What that says is we've already been visited, which... Yes. There's hundreds upon thousands upon thousands of... I guess, I don't know, it's, it's always deemed unworthy, but there's a lot of examples out there. Yeah, basically the Fermi paradox comes down to... Ooh. When you're looking at it on a statistical scale, aliens have to exist. And if they exist... Why haven't they visited us? Well, they probably have visited us. We just don't know it. Or, the exact opposite. What we if haven't we, visited what if them. The scariest part is what if we are them and we are the smartest in the galaxy? What if we are the most advanced right now? And we don't want to think that. Might not be statistically probable. Because we're not ready. We're still, a youthful, still probable. we're still a youthful group. A youthful society, technically. You know, We haven't been around that long. And we all... 10,000 like, million years. It's like telling a 10-year-old that they have to be an adult. We're not we're still technically like 10-year-olds out here. You know, as a society, as a human race, as you know, we are not even close to ready to do any of that. Yeah, but we, we have to get along as a global society. Okay, so you're like, you're not on the you don't think we're in a simulation. No, no definitely, not. definitely don't think we're in a simulation. The simulation would be way better. <laughs> no, it seriously uh, would be. <laughs> if this is a simulation, like the fuck you, sucks. assholes. This like, is yeah. bullshit. This is like race the wars Chuck e. and like simulation. Shit. This like, isn't no. like Universal Studios. We're in the ground floor of something pretty cool that's coming up, but that's the scariest part to think of. Is I hope that there's already like we want people to have already been here before. That's what gives you peace of mind when you have someone to relate to. And if we are ahead of the game here, and there's nowhere in the galaxy that's as far as head of, ahead as us, we don't want to be Big Brother. We don't want that. We want someone... Like, all these movies out there, they have people... Aliens will come in, and they're going to show us all new technology. Like, uh, you know, the... I think in terms of the universe, if you're going to compare it to, like, like, the Earth, like, we're still in, like, not like Pangea, but we're just past that Pangea standpoint where, like... There's probably a couple other civilizations out there, but they haven't contacted each other yet, and they're not trying to be imperialistic yet. They're just trying to survive. Like I think right now, as a species, we're just out here trying to like stay living. This is going the complete opposite direction, though. That basically says that like all that has already been done, and the society is so advanced that. Like, well, yeah, your theory is saying like I don't know like. Um, I just like want to see this, what guys like all the si- I think it could go both I think it goes both ways. I think you could definitely look at it through both lenses. I think there's definitely evidence that we have been visited. And I think that you could say that if there's not conclusive evidence that we have been visited, then maybe we are the most advanced. And if we are the most advanced, then I don't believe that we're the only civilization, but maybe we're just at a point where the different alien species just haven't reached each other or you know the different life forms out there haven't reached each other yet so i think it's plausible both ways but i do not think we're living in a simulation no i definitely agree with you there what are you looking up Hanchi? uh give me two seconds i have to find it i watched a movie the other day and it just shows i forget what it's called that's the only issue here i know how to explain it 
Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to hit you with the four arguments exploring the paradox. One, aliens never came because of a physical difficulty that makes space travel infeasible, which could be related to astronomy, biology, or engineering. Two, aliens chose never to come to Earth. Three, advanced civilizations arose too recently for aliens to reach us. Four, aliens have visited Earth in the past, but we have not observed them. Well, a lot of, like, when you watch alien shows, every time the alien comes up, it always messes with our technology. I mean, any movie you ever see, it always messes with our technology. And, um, you know, it, it, that's kind of like half the, half the battle, you could, I guess, say, is that no one has any good evidence of it because every time they come around, technology always gets hazy and it's hard to, you know, actually capture something for the masses to see. And what are we? We're a I have to see it society. So if you don't see it, it doesn't fucking exist. And that's our culture. So if these aliens are really smart, they can easily manipulate this piece of shit in my hand. This is nothing to them if they can travel galaxies. The Russians and Chinese can. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not that easy to make your camera go fuzzy. And, you know, that's a plausible thing. You know, why haven't we caught them? Well, because every time they come around, they release an EMP and your phone's almost worthless. Or <laughs> camcorder or whatever. All right, EMPs. Do you think that they come at you, bro? Do you think the aliens are putting like there's an extraterrestrial species out there that's making Facebook memes? I hope so. Hmm. Maybe Trying to you sway, never know. Like political elections and shit. Like, it's do you think they're maybe, like, or to even a lesser degree, do you think they just dig memes? I think everybody digs memes. Yeah, it's hard not to. They'd be dumb not to. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so, a, that's their favorite thing. That was my Greetings, laundry. Greetings, Earthlings. Show us your Show best us memes. your dankest memes. <laughs> well, you got three types of societies, you know. You've got... It's I forget what it is. I've been trying to look it up, but I wasn't ready for this topic or I would have been prepared. I watched a movie of it, and you've got Global, and then you've got the second one, which I can't remember which one I want to look it up, and then you got Galactic. Mm. And we are... Right now, this is a real thing. We're like a 0.7 on a global, and that's a first degree society. Mm. So if we were global, that means we'd have a global president. We're all on the same page, yeah. all, that, all that shit right now. So we're like a 0.7 global status. When you get to galactic status, so glo if we got to a global status, we've established space travel. We're in the universe. We're at a 0.7 right now. So yeah. if we get to galactic, that means we've explored other nebulas and other regions of the galaxy and shit like that and then if we get to phase two it means we've established contact essentially so if we're at point seven we're not far away from some crazy shit right now and it's called something it's called like the stratosphere formula or something like that next show i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up and i'll have a better example we'll come prep next week you want to talk aliens i'll talk all matrix that was day. ahead of its time really Death, well, death, death. Time. so all right guys that's all i had on my quandary you got anything to add to that pat I mean, you pretty much summed up most of what I was going to say, but I think they've already been here and they're just, they're not like hiding. They're not here waiting for they're us. They're hiding in plain sight. They're not secretly like looking over us. They're just, they've been here and they're, they're gone. So they're like, and these guys suck. They're like, boring. We would do the same thing. We wouldn't, um, I don't know. I, I feel like as, as humans, we wouldn't want to like take, we wouldn't want to ruin if we if we if we were the aliens and we were visiting like a like another another planet or whatever, we we, wanna, we wouldn't want to like change what they were doing. Yeah, we want to make we sure they weren't like, like hostile. I, I mean, I think we would at this point, but I think as we continue to evolve, we may get to a point where our yeah. species is more. So you got to think that like you know if we do come but to a, a third rate I'm culture, not, I don't think we're stalking. Like we're not getting stalked by aliens. They might be like curious, but like they gotta wait for us to get advanced enough and and like be cognitive enough to understand them. Because if we go to like I said, but at the same time, I don't know. If we show up to a cannibalistic society, they're all in tribes and they believe in like the sun gods. Like we're we're talking Egyptians here, like where they do have some weird shit out in the Aztecs and stuff. And you show up in a fucking spaceship and you come down from the fucking heavens and you show up on this whole society. That whole society is going to stop everything they believe in, and they're only going to believe in you, and you're going to become a god, and you're going to shift that whole society. That's true. Which could be a good thing. I mean, you could you could certainly like 
form a like build a civilization in seconds if you just showed up and showed him your presence like if aliens showed up here in the aztec times we would there's a uh, did, and that's how we got phones and shit there's a video game called black and white that sums that up very very good that i like playing mm. and you're basically god and you create your own civilization but um uh this is a pc game let's see yeah i'm gonna have to check that um, out black and white but basically, if he, God, God bless. I think if the aliens, if the aliens showed up and um, did the whole Egypt thing, they would they can also tear it down like they would with Machu Picchu, or some of these Amazonian, uh, Amazonian things. The weirdest thing I think about with aliens is that um, all the uh, all the times we've seen them, they all they all line up on the map, like perfectly. So hmm. we've been visited before. I agree, Pat. We'll be visited again. We can tangent about aliens. Just all like we'll day, be folks. visiting you guys again next week. But for now, you guys got yeah. any lessons learned? Lessons learned. Lessons learned. Hmm. 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 Anyone hmm. learn anything? I mean, I'm always learning stuff on this show. Um, I guess I learned that. I learned the difference between a river and sea otter. Hey, that's, that's good. <laughs> I learned who, uh, I learned what UGK was. Hey! And, uh, hey. Yeah. I'll have to do some UGK. UGK. One of the Listen chillest. In. UGK, bumpy. I learned that I shouldn't be, um, you know, intimidated to walk into a sex shop. Just go in there, check it out. You know, oh, yeah. Maybe do it's, an auto it's, blow or some shit. It's fun times, always. Some flavored lube. Futures now. Yeah. I always judge the the lady that's working there and all the customers that are there when they walk in. Maybe Even though you're one of them. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my. <laughs> then who am I? Uh, oh, man. I learned a lot today, folks. I don't know. I could say a lot of things. I'm just going to... I'm going to stick to my guns and everything we just, I just got so hyped about. And I'm just going to say I learned that we're not alone in the world. <laughs> <laughs> We're not alone in this in this universe. In this uni- no, Fermi paradox, bro. In order to Fermi, that it's almost statistically impossible for us to be alone, and that mm-hmm. is gonna make me want to get into a puppy pile later tonight. Oh, oh. that plan brought a little warmth to me. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I think that about wraps up our show for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Termulus Podcast. As always, send us a couple emails at our Gmail account, termuluspodcast at gmail.com. Hit us up on the Twitter handle at termuluspod. And as always, don't forget. So, bum, 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 bum. Hey. Hey.